Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Strife's Sanctum. My name is Citizen Strife, and this week, well, you can read it in the title, we're doing something very, very interesting. Puella Magi Monica Magica. More commonly known as Monica Magica. And this is a show that I cannot do without spoiling it, so you've been warned. But I will do my best to kind of go over a few things to try and, like, hook people into the show, at least, until I can talk about some things. But we'll start, as we normally do, with characters, and then I will introduce what the show is after. Um, suffice it to say, without spoiling too much, it's about magical girls and fun and happiness and all that jazz. And destroying ancient evil and bullshit so that people with transformation powers and you know young girls and having all that fun but anyway we start with uh monica kaname voiced by christine um marie cabanos she was in the she's the main character of some atelier game she was shiho in persona 5 you'll hear the name persona 5 a lot because a lot of the actors who did this went on the do that so <laughs> suffice it to say i like the actors in the show anyway monica wakes up she's kind of listless and you know boring and whatever and she doesn't really know what's going on she gets accosted by someone known as homura akemi who's a transfer student she's voiced by christina v who knows her somehow so she's walking home, and she doesn't think anything of it. Some weird stuff starts happening, and she sees a Kami, but she also sees this weird cat, fox, cat thing. It's not quite a fox, it's not quite a cat, it's not, it's, it's a cube. Whatever the fuck a cube is, it's a cute thing, is what it, what it is, and it's voiced by Cassandra Lee Morris, who's Morgana, so... If you're wondering why Morgana sounds like a cute, weird animal creature, because she's done it before. Um, but she saves Kyube from who's apparently trying to get shot at by Homura. Odd. Think nothing of it. And Monica and her friend Sayaka Miki, again, voiced by another Persona actor. Imagine that. Um, Sarah Ann Williams, who is Chihaya. I know, I'm saying Persona a lot. Bear with it. So... Sayaka is Monica's friend. She finds the Kyube thing, and Akami is just trying to warn her, don't. Don't listen to it. Don't believe it. Don't listen to a thing it says. All the while, weird stuff starts happening in the first episode, and they end up transported to, like, a weird Gunkutsu-looking picture book thing known as a labyrinth. And that's where stuff, strange stuff starts happening and that's where our battle and our combat happens madaka and Say sayaka are normal girls so what are they gonna do kyube starts saying become magical girls it should be fun it should you know we need to save ourselves and then someone named mommy tomoe voiced by carrie karanon who was caroline justine and lavenza from persona 5 imagine that it's all coming together she is a magical girl and she takes her she takes them under her wing and shows them the ropes, and she's able to just shoot things and, you know, tie them up in ribbons and beat the shit out of them, and she is a nice lady. She's doing all her fun stuff, and she likes the fact that Madaka and Sayaka are here, and she's trying to teach her everything, and she teaches her all about the magical girls and all the stuff that happens and how Kyube sort of saved her life in a way by making her a magical girl and it's all great and fun and that's what I'm that's I'm done I'm done spoiling if you haven't seen it watch till episode 3 if you're turned off by it and that's all I'm gonna say is if episode 3 doesn't grab you if, if what happens in episode 3 does not grab you and I've Everybody says this, and I will say this now. This show is not for you. But if the show is for you, you're in for stuff on par with some of the best anime you've ever seen in your fucking life. So that's where the spoiler warning is. As definitive as I can make it, 
go watch till episode three, get back here and watch the rest of it. If you have seen Madoka Magica, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So all the spoiler guys are away. They're away. They're away. They're away. Let me talk about the fun shit. Mommy dies. She fucking dies, man. It's nuts. So the witches were actually magical girls the whole time. Kyubei's a fucking monster alien cat. It's just fucking amazing. I rewatched it a few days ago. Ah, it's just so fucking good. I forgot how good it was because I remembered it. But it's so fucking good. And then, you know, Kyoko is great. And the story with Sayaka is just sad as hell. Madoka torn between trying to do what's right and what Homura keeps telling her to do, which is not do a damn thing. It's 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 just amazing. So, to backtrack a little bit, I told you about episode three, and this will be sort of similar to my reviews as before, but now I'm actually going to dive deep into it. So, Mommy's protecting... Madaka and Sayaka, you get this feeling that Kyube keeps trying to tell them become magical girls. It'll be fun and realize realistically all the witches have been trying to kill them. We don't know what the witches are. We don't know what these like weird orb things, these seeds are. But then we start figuring it out and figuring it out and uh mommy ends up dying because of hubris. Akemi tried to stop her cuz she knows better. Doesn't fucking work. But Sayaka and Madoka don't want to fucking listen to anything that Homura says. They're still being stuck in what Kyubei's saying. Um, but that's the beauty of the show. It keeps throwing these little things at you. Episodes 4, 5, and 6 are about Sayaka trying to get her love interest to, you know, get over his fucking hand problem. You know, which makes sense. I mean, this guy lived his whole life doing a thing and he can't not do a thing and then all of a sudden he can do the thing again and yet despite all the pleas and protests and the otherwise of making the wish against it the wish ends up backfiring as he goes with his other friend Hitomi who ended up being Sayaka's friend but not really Hitomi also tried to kill herself because of a witch's death cult I guess this show's fucking dark. Did I mention that? Did I mention the show's goddamn dark? And I love it. Um, but, but yes. So, Hitomi confesses to Ke Kyosuke, and Sayaka goes off the deep end. The new girl, Kyoko, has been kind of following them ever since Mommy died. Says, fuck, just, dude, you don't give your wish away. Do it for good reasons. And then she thought it was a good reason, and Sayaka just realized, oh shit, I made a mistake. What we end up finding out is several different things about witches that we did not know. One, these soul gem things that they were, you know, holding on to that Kyobi was creating was actually their their bodies, their souls, literally. And they can't be a, apart. Madoka tries to throw it away to stop Sayaka from beating up on Kyoko and it turns out she basically becomes a dead a dead girl for like a minute Homer has to just run off and get it they learn that from uh, Kyube who rightly says well you never asked me that thing how was I supposed to know you were going to ask me Kyube comes across as a strange thing because he doesn't do it out of malice he does it out of programming and will. It's just he doesn't have any emotions. He just says, well, you didn't ask me. But it's not like he doesn't give him information. He just gives them information as it comes to them, as they learn the things, and they learn that most of the shit goes wrong. So Sayaka finally does go off the deep end, and she ends up turning into a witch, which is even fucking worse. So we find out that magical girls themselves were the witches all along, and then they were killing girls from other problems that were just trying to kill other things or trying to get despair. So Saika's just utter despair and disgust for humanity is starting to show itself, and she becomes a witch. Kyoko sacrifices herself in episode 8 or 9, I believe, but then the real story starts to hit, because you keep thinking that this 
Homer lady is like, she knows more than she's letting on because she does. Kyube knows more than she's letting on because she does. And then uh, Madoka keeps sitting there like a stump, not sure what to do. And in normal circumstances, that kind of character would drive me insane because Madoka doesn't do jack shit for the entire show. She stands there like a stump. But when you've been faced with the things that she's been faced with and you deal with Kyube, who's basically matrix matrixing all these people by turning them into magical girls to turn them into witches and to stop the entropy from happening, but I'm funneling the energy to my own planet and my own society, but you're the best at it, but you're not doing anything, but make a wish, I'll be, I'll be more than happy to take your energy. His line of the day was... Well, if you ever want to sacrifice yourself for the... If you ever want to kill yourself to save humanity, call me. I'm like, dude. Again, did I mention this show was dark? And again, this is the... This is the lady who went on to be Morgana. So the, the, the kitty who would always tell you to go to sleep at night is going, Hey, if you'd like to kill yourself, that'd be great, you know? What the fuck, dude? So you go through that, and finally, Homura is revealed to be this lady who was skittish as all hell, learned that Madoka was a magical girl before she was, and apparently was the best of them. Mommy was still alive, Sayaka and all of them were still alive, but they ended up dealing with this Walpurgis not thing, this ultimate witch of ultimate bullshit. And she's been reliving thanks to a wish to save Con uh, uh, Madoka's life, she has to relive 30 days in her life and find a way to stop while Purchase knocked and all this shit and save everyone's life. And then it turns out that in the midst of all of it, before uh, Kimmy fucks up and basically says, I'm done, I'm through with this, Madoka saves the day. By doing the one thing that she was told not to do, and the one thing she was supposed to do by two different forces, but her wish, this was, this was amazing, the wish is what saves the day. She makes the ultimate sacrifice and says, we're not dealing with magical girls anymore, we're no longer going to be your motherfucking batteries anymore, we're not going to go through all this crazy dark shit anymore, and... Akemi, being the one that's still alive, ends up being transported into this weird amalgamated world that has, new, like, new forms of witches, known as wraiths. And Kyube doesn't really know the answer to it. So he and, a, and Homer are near the end are just like, well, this is our world now. And they fight it off. And again, I, I don't know... I really don't know how to express just how good of a show this is. I will always put Bebop as my favorite, and I have other, like, personal favorites, like Black Lagoon, for that, like, dingy, seedy, like, bounty hunter stuff. But as far as things that made you think through and just question what it was you were watching and what you were seeing and how you just go so far down the rabbit hole into basically saying, this is a magical girl show, it's cute and cuddly, and yet Yuji or Yuki Kajiura's music should tell you everything you need to know. This is not a good show. This is not a happy show. It's written by the guy who wrote Psychopaths. This is not meant to be a good, fun show to watch. It's a gripping, seedy, just malevolent feel through the entire thing. Almost like a horror movie. Like... Uh, Hitomi basically starting a death cult with this like ammonia and bleach bullshit and it was a witch all along all these little things Sayaka just falling further into despair because she just didn't tell the boy she liked him because she's stupid um you know like I understand it I get it. Like, why would you tell this boy that you've never told before that you liked him before, even though you sat by his fucking bed for five years? Why would you tell him now that I'm a magical girl and I'm going to turn into a witch someday and I'm fighting these evil things? You know, you can't say that. And then it turns out your friend has said, fuck you, I want him first. Just, eh. it's so much to it. And again, even though 
Madoka herself doesn't do everything. She at least acts as a filter. She saw Mommy pass away. She saw Kyoko and Sayaka keep fighting. And then all the while, Homura is just saying, dude, just don't do a thing. I want to save your life, and I don't know how. And it turns out by doing the thing that Kyobe wanted, ended up saving Homura and fucking over Kyobe in the first place. That is genius. The show is absolute genius. And I just cannot stop talking about it. I tried to th- I tried to think of a of a of a negative. Like you know me, I try to come up with positives and negatives, right? But it's all positives. I can't, like, even if you could say, oh, well, the, the cutesy stuff happens for two, like, that was the point. The point of it was to, you know, because it was still unnerving. The first couple of episodes were still unnerving. You have Akemi trying to shoot the fuck out of Kyube, like, literally fucking shoot him. And then he reveals that he can just eat his own body and grow a new one. And, like, it's just so disgusting and lovely disgusting and lovely i love the term that's a perfect way to describe the show it is disgusting and lovely at the same time i you can hear it in my voice i'm just bowled over because i saw this four to five years ago i mean i knew that it was the thing that it would be they said wait three episodes you'll get it and then when you hear that main theme song, and that main theme song, uh, the ending theme, the Magia theme from Calafina, like, it's just, everything about that is just, this is not the show you think it is. This is a great show taking all of the elements of all the magical girl shows and the happy-go-lucky and saying, we get fucking hooked whether we just wriggle around your brain and just scoop it out, that sort of feeling. It's like, it... Oh, just takes everything and says, we will crank it to 11, literally. And if you don't like it, well, the show isn't for you. But if you do like it, then we are going to make sure you remember it. And I think that's something that can be said about uh, Madoka Magica is you will remember this show. It may not be your favorite. It's not mine, but it's certainly up there, especially now that I've rewatched it. But man, it's it's almost like watching Future Diary that first time. You're just like, I don't know what the fuck I just watched, but I'm never going to forget it. You know, that sort of thing. So I know I told most of the other guys to go watch it in episode three and whatever. I'm sure everybody else who saw, who've seen it and can agree that episode three does its thing. And again, that is where it starts and it does not stop. It's the perfect length of a show that doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't overuse its themes because it's perfectly paced. Even some of the more cutesy stuff is meant to be there is to counteract all the bad shit that happens to these girls and all of the coldness with which Kyube acts and just just stares at you. He fucking stares at you. And it's just unnerving. The show is unnerving and fantastic, and I love it. And I am really glad I watched it again, and I'm really hopeful that anybody that was not turned off goes to see it, and anybody who has seen it again watches it again. Again, I haven't seen any of the spinoff material, but once you open the floodgates, when you have that sort of show that turns the thing on its dime, and it's just like, we've got a hook. What do the other ones do? And maybe I'll watch the other ones, like Orica Magic and stuff. But once you open that floodgate and that rabbit hole, you you can't put the thing out of the you know you can't reopen it. But what rewatching it can do is reaffirm just how ballsy it took to just take everything that you thought you knew and what you'd think that these characters would go through and say, nope, we are going to kill all these people off. We are going to make their lives a living hell and it's something i'm never gonna forget and i'm so glad i rewatched it but that'll do it for me it's probably another short one but you can hear it in my voice i'm just (laughs) just so good but next week is the long-awaited hatsune miku project diva episode where i get to talk all about project diva that i've been playing for 10 fucking years 
and I even had an interview with a with a um with a producer of her own covers of those songs. I'm like, I went full bore. Hopefully it comes across well when I actually record it. Because it isn't just games. It's about Vocaloid in general. It's about the reason why it's such a big fucking deal in Japan. Why everybody should love it. Um, so there's that episode. After that, we've got Konosuba. The polar opposite of Madoka Magica, now that I think about it. And then, I will go to an anime convention. Yay! I've got my Robotnik suit already, and I just need to go. Um, they are lightening the... They are lightening the restrictions up here in Minnesota. Hopefully the mask mandate goes away so I can wear the mustache in full. If not, I'll just have a mustache mask, I guess, and then go from there. But I want to be in the full Robotnik getup if I, if I can. I've posted pictures online, and hopefully it, you know, it comes to pass that I can don the entire getup. But those are the next three weeks. Of course, I've got um, the rundown after that and then Chrono Cross. And then I'll go from there. I'm trying to get through my own weird schedule of things, but I'm finally working my way back down to something manageable where I can start streaming again, which would be even better. So streams, podcasts, YouTube videos, Persona 5 is almost done. Yay! 200 episodes in. Yay! It's almost done. All that shit. So I'm in a happy mood. I'm in a good mood. But that'll do it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. If not, like, share, and subscribe. Please tell people you liked it, because I hope I hope I did this show justice in the short time I talked about it. But that'll do it for me. Citizen Strife, signing off. <laughs>